I think he did and he didn't. I chaired the meeting and I aim and talked at the very beginning about the fifth province, a safe place to talk. And I think he was listened to respectfully. Certainly people wanted to ask him questions and when they weren't satisfied with maybe some of the answers he gave, they came back again. But there was no, at no point, you know, I think, was it unfair or unjust. One time when one of the audience asked you about the electricity going one way. Yes. And it was something to do with English law. Or something. That's right. You yeah. Were surprised because you. I was surprised because I had no idea that this was the situation, and I still haven't fully clarified it, and I'm trying to clarify it now. My understanding so far, which could be wrong, is that a number of the companies, some of the companies, have signed contracts uh, that the the wind energy will go straight to the UK through the interconnector. And that means it cannot be connected to the grid here. Now, I have been told that, uh, how, how is this described to me? There's an issue about English law and Irish law. But I mean, one of the things we're constantly being told by our ministers here, for example, in Mayo, the people down there are told, oh, all of this energy will be connected to the grid. In other words, that you could have an Intel down in Mayo, etc. You can have big factories there. Now, we need clarification on this. In fact, I have written to Airgrid, and I'm awaiting a response on this. But this was news to me, and I asked him, I spoke to him afterwards, I asked him for clarity on it, to show me the documents, where it says this, because I would like to read this myself and, you know, have a better understanding of what's going on here. Because... I think part of the problem in this debate is that very few people are telling it as it is, in the sense that we have corporate speak from a lot of the large companies, we have others with agendas, and people are not prepared to say exactly what's happening. One of the most important points that was made there tonight was what they called cumulative effect. You know, we're hearing about a bit here and a bit there and a bit somewhere else. And nobody is painting the picture. Our minister should be prepared to stand up and say, this is our policy. We are basing it on A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. We've done the cost-benefit analysis, and this is the outcome. And we are saying, etc. In order to achieve that, we will need to build, we will need to locate, we will need to do. We have heard none of that. We get bits and pieces here and there. For example, how can I believe what some of the companies are saying? I was at a meeting of the Council for the West, an organisation I once chaired, and the gentleman from Airgrid was there speaking about Grid West. And he said, and he's an engineer, he said at that meeting, the maximum amount of cable you can underground in Grid West is 1.5 kilometres. That's what he said. That is simply not true. Um, is, it a, is it a case where anybody's back garden but my back garden? Well, I suppose if somebody asked you about your back garden and that there might be an 80, 180 foot pylon in the garden next to your back garden or even the garden next to the back garden to your back garden, I suspect then you could answer that question. But if you listened to the debate tonight, and I, I presume you did, you will know that there was a lot more than that raised. It wasn't just about not in my back garden, though that is part of the story. Of course it's part of the story. It's also about, number one, this is about reducing CO2 emissions. And there were serious questions raised, very serious, about whether wind energy could help us in that direction or not, or how far could it go. The fact that wind en energy is unreliable, it's intermittent, and that, you know, for every megawatt of wind energy you produce, you need a standby because the wind doesn't always blow. We were told that there isn't a co proper cost-benefit analysis, that we haven't looked at all of the options that are out there, and that this is being driven by multinationals, by developers, and that we're going into another bubble. There's no doubt that I get a sense here. This whole thing is out of control, and we need to take a step back. We don't even have what they call an SEA, which is a basic requirement under European legislation for what we're doing. We're now doing it retrospectively. But the problem about doing something retrospectively is you made your plans, so now we do an SEA that fits in with what we've decided to do anyway.